Hi, my name's Andrew Probert, and I'm a concept artist and have been for quite a while. But I've only just discovered Copic markers, and I'm real excited to share with you just how I use them in my work. So let's get started. Okay, so this is my sketchbook. This is a new one. And uh, as you can see, there's just uh, there's a few drawings in it that uh, uh, that I've already done on another project, and uh, uh, still another project. So this is how I work. is fairly small, and um, what we have on this side of the book are uh, is a printout of some notes that I was given by my producer, and. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, th these are sketches, so um, what I'm going to do is start uh, working on this page, uh, page number one. I've, I've already written the, uh, the title for the project. This is an independent project. And I'm doing a spaceship. This is an, an exterior for the ship. So um, let's see if I can uh, move us a little closer here. And uh, uh, you can sort of follow along. Uh, <clears throat> the original idea for the ship actually was a uh, sort of a hexagonal shape. And uh, the pilot, or the occupant pilot, is uh, in this case a woman. And uh, they wanted her lying down for the most part. And uh, it seemed a little uh, different to me, so um, what I'm doing is I'm I've got a body laying down here, and uh, sort of a hexagonal shape um, drawn very loosely around her, just uh, just to kind of loosen myself up and uh, start me uh, thinking about uh, what I'm doing. Uh, for this uh, spaceship of theirs, it's a very it, it's a short film. It's a very interesting film, and um, and she's she is able to sit up in this uh, hexagonal s cylinder basically. So um, she would be um, sitting it, in, in some cases, but it would be very tight. They were talking about making this fairly tight on her. Um, yeah, that doesn't, you see, that, that doesn't leave a lot of uh, foot room if, if the side of that comes in. So uh, that's a package that <clears throat> is delivering some more paper, actually. So, um, so what I want to do is maybe start with that and have her sitting. And... Um, Maybe start with that as a, as a as an outside dimension, just to just to give her feet some room, and I would move that outward from there. Uh, the bed area, her laying down seat or cockpit, would be basically centered within the space. So whatever this is out here should be the same over here. So this is um, could be very boring for for most of you I know but it's it's kind of the way that I work not real exciting uh, initially so this is her 
sort of bed area. And um, they're, they're talking about having controls on these, these, in this case, what would be upper surfaces. But if she's laying down, then the, uh, the controls would be you know, sort of at her face level. So, um, <clears throat> so let's, let's, let's take this out of the boxy world that it's in right at the moment. And, um, think about what it would be like if, if the top was actually curved. I'm, a, I'm more of a curved than a box kind of guy. And uh, and and I'm not always inspired by cupcakes, so that's that's not what you're seeing here. Uh, but if she was The bed was here, her cockpit couch, as it were, and she could still sit. Maybe like that. Okay, well. So the outside would be curved, and and what what I've uh, I've talked to the producer uh, just briefly about the possibility of actually rotating this laying down position because in their script it's basically headed. Uh, In a, in a kind of a horizontal flight mode. And what, I, what I've proposed is that they think about maybe going in a vertical flight mode. So, um, you know, if she was sort of laying down, and maybe not flat, you know, but more of a, of a chaise lounge position. Going more in this direction. Um, the, the back going with this cupcake idea, or loaf of bread if you will. Um, then in perspective Here's this is at the at the bed level, so I'll actually move that sort of here, and um, and curve it around her. So let's. And, and what I'm doing is I'm drawing through all of this right now because you need to you need to do that in order to rough out your perspective. And um, let's actually bulge that curve a little bit to give it 
some a little more interest. Bring this up. And down. So we have a longer bottom area. So I'm using, I'm drawing with uh, Copic multi-liners. Uh, these these narrow ones, uh, th these are not refillable like the uh, like the SP multi-liners. But for my hand, my stubby little hand, these fit much better. And uh, the it's the same ink and um, and same quality, but uh, just in a different container. So I'm going up to a to a number three. That was a number. I mean a point three. This was a point one. Uh, just to thicken up some of these outs outside lines, uh, just to get a better understanding as to where I'm going with all of this now. We don't have a top and bottom, so. Instead of being flat, if that was actually curved, top and bottom, then that could work into a curve, top and bottom. So this would be like, kind of like that. So now she's in a baked potato or a loaf of bread. But if we then added some sort of shape back here, this could be her uh, engines and the rest of the body. It's, it's a small, uh, <clears throat> the script is very short, it's only a few pages. Uh, it's a short story, but um, in it, uh, we, we actually pick her up in space in this ship. And she's off, uh, she's flying off for, for reasons which we will discover when we see the film. So, uh, the ship itself, you know the high, the whys and wherefores and all of the functions of it haven't really been established, and it's and they're not really necessary to the story. So any additional things that I put onto this are uh, basically uh, my own hypothesizing as to what a ship like this might do, uh, what mission it might actually have, how it would land or dock or even open up. So these are all uh, really not important to the story because we don't see a lot of that in the version of the script that I have, uh, which is a very early version of course. So everything's everything's subject to change. But uh, this is sort of where I'm going with that. Um, Actually, another idea might be to have this thing be the same shape. Or the, you know, the same height rather than have a difference in height. And uh, there was some talk about windows, very narrow windows on the ship. So um, uh, 
you know, I'm thinking maybe where this this curve break line is might be some a nice place for a window on both sides. And uh, and the ship is hyperlight. It's an FTL ship. It's small, but still. Uh, that's the technology that they're talking about. So it's it's possible even that uh, you know it might have some kind of a a ring on the back of it. Yeah, if you wanted FTL, you should have put a ring on it. So, just as an initial pass, we'll see what that looks like. I'm going to go in with even a heavier uh, pin, a, a zero, a 0.5 on this one. And we'll see what what this looks like. Again, this is page one, so you want to explore ideas that make sense to you. You don't want to spend a lot of time exploring every idea that pops into your mind, but but you do want to to go through and uh, discover, you know, maybe have a, a happy accident and discover something you hadn't expected just by sort of roaming through the design. Um, so, the other part of the ring is over there. So just, uh, just to see what this looks like a little bit, I'm going to get to my, to my markers, which are, which are over here. And uh, I have this wonderful set of markers. And what I'm going to do is, um, is uh, for the sh for the ship body, uh, I'm going to go to some cool markers. Uh, these are uh, all Copic, of course. This is a cool three, and uh, and I'm going to go to a warm a warm one and a warm three, and uh, maybe even a just for the window, a blue-violet 31, which is a uh, pale lavender. So, I do this uh, uh, basically at this stage just to sort of uh, sort of mass out what it is that I'm looking at. Now also under under my tablet, what I, or my page, I have this protector page. Uh, one side is kind of waxy and the other side is, uh, is, is duller. I put the dull side up and the, and the waxiness is kind of protecting the pages below it uh, from any marker bleed through. Uh, this sketchbook is actually pretty good, but some, some uh, sketchbook uh, pages can be thin enough to, to where they'll bleed through to the next page behind them. So, I'm going to use my chisel point and just and just kind of knock out you know what we have going here just so I can basically understand what's going on. I'll do that on both of these at this stage. Just again to give myself a an idea of the massing of this uh, shape. I do this with all my stuff, and and I'm going to do a um, a subsequent video that will actually uh, show some of my sketchbook uh, pages, and you can see just uh, how this all works out. Nice thing about Copics, uh, well, any marker will basically double up in intensity if you go over it twice. Uh, the thing I like about Copics is that their uh, that their blend is actually a lot smoother than most markers, uh, in, in my opinion, so I'm very happy about that. 
This is just some uh, some surface treatment just to snazz it up a little bit for myself because I I'm a snazzy kind of guy. And it, it sort of helps define the shape a little bit as well. Uh, for me anyway. So And this is all, uh, all with the number three. If I went in with the number four, you're not going to see a great deal of difference, but there'll be a little bit. Now, uh, not only do they have the chisel point, but they also have this, uh, in, in, in these classic uh, square markers, they have uh, uh, a bullet tip. Now, you can change the tips out on these uh, to whatever you want within the Copic line, but I prefer the bullet because it gives me a, a, a smaller line that's hard and doesn't flex a lot. So uh, I just add some additional uh, reinforcement to this shape here. Maybe even throw a shadow in there just to, uh, to remind me that that piece sticks out. And um, come along and darken some of this up. Now um, in in the uh, in the sketch markers, in the Copic sketch markers, which is a window shape is going to be, uh, you do have the chisel point and but you also have a brush point which gives you kind of a uh, you know a, a, a flexible tip but it also gives you a much finer point than those bullets. So I'm just uh, just laying in this window uh, idea that uh, that I had mentioned before, and I'm just going to let that kind of sit like that. And um, it's a blue violet 31. I'm going to go to blue violet 34 then and sort of reinforce uh, the reflection on that so we can get a better understanding that, that it's glass. Okay, um, now the warm colors were for uh, the capsule itself, uh, the, the lid on it. And uh, so I'm going to, oops, got the bullet point there. I'm going to go for the uh, for the chisel, just to just to knock in a, a basic tonality, and the same with, with this as well. It kind of sets up the uh, the coloring, and um, I'll let that sit for just a moment to dry out. Nice thing about Copics is that if you go in while they're still wet, the blend is is very smooth. Uh, I'm looking to add a little more a uh, little more line to it, so I'm just letting it sit for a little bit, and then I'm going to go in with this bullet side and just kind of uh, add some again some like reflections just to uh, better communicate the shape of this thing, you know. thing is, <clears throat> these are going to be shown to, uh, to clients, in this case my producer and, uh, and director. So it's, it's good to be able to um, try and, you know, render as much as possible so that there's no miscommunication about the shape of what it is that they're seeing. And if uh, you know if you can do some basic um, coloration, then uh, that visually communicates that a lot better. Now you see I've got some sketch lines in there um, on the three, and I'll go back in with the one and sort of be able to blend those down a little bit and. Uh, Again, that's a very cool feature of this, uh, these markers. So, 
So I have a direction. I have a shape that I'm going in. And um, you can see that. And um, with, with this warp ring. So going back to my to my uh, multi-liners. Uh, we'll start with a rear view. See what this warp ring might look like here. At least this version of it. This ship is going this direction. So we have the body and the capsule or the lid or the top or whatever you want to call that. And it's a little window slot. And the brace for holding that warp ring. Now the brace can actually could actually be a sort of a collector, you know, like on Star Trek's warp engines, they have that hydrogen collector on the front, the, the bussard end caps for their warp engines, their Starfleet warp engines. So if I continued that shape up to the warp ring, slot blending into this support for the for the warp ring in this version and I'll draw through the body Now this body would house uh, the power for the warp system, obviously a very small power system. And, um, and life support for, this, for the capsule, for the passenger compartment. So if we had couple of openings in this in these supports Uh, you know, might allude to collecting the, any free hydrogen that was in space, feeding it into the mini 
warp system here. Then you you have your magic uh, go on. So let's thicken those lines up a little bit. I'm going to go straight to the uh, to the O5 here, just to see what that looks like. Again, this is just a first idea, but I wanted to kind of explore as we went along and uh, just to see where that would take us, you know. A little shaky there. That's warp drive will do that to you. It'll. Uh, It'll make your hand uh, like that, and I, of course I know all about that, so that's, uh, that's to be expected, that's okay. And we have our collection intakes. So, uh, you know, I really don't know what's going on inside of this thing. Um, I have to tell you that. If I, if I told you what was going on, I'd have to kill you. But let's see, there's some kind of an engine um, cover, something magical going on in there. And then maybe her life support system is is the first half of that space and then um, you know maybe just looking at some panel lines to break that surface up you know um, Maybe something alluding to the to those bussard collectors a little bit, and then the the back part of that warp ring would be seen through there. Um, and then we, you know, we go through the same same process. I have my well, let's see. I have my cool three, and I'm going to be a little more delicate here. Again, communicating the shape with the light actually coming from this direction. So this back side is in shadow. down there for some underside reflections from the mysterious light source that always pops up in space. Um, in this version, I'm going to see what it looks like to have this being part of the body. So the body actually curves from these supports around under that window and then back. It's actually kind of nice. Again, 
there's some shadow from that upper support coming through. Even though the light's over here, you're still communicating that this is kind of an upper surface that, that would do something like that. And then we come in with our number four. Copic has a nice deal where they uh, the the sharper ends on all your markers are, have a darker line, a thicker dark line separation, and the, the chisel points have a very thin line, so you can tell. And then there's also a graphic that shows a point and a chisel. So you can pretty much tell uh, what it is that you're opening. It saves you a lot of time that way. Okay, so... There we go. Underside shadow. Now a lot of times what you can do is color the top and bottom just to give it a little more uh, a, a little a little more pizzazz, if you will, uh, as if there's a light of a different color. That's a ship of a different color. Well, let's say maybe an orange like this this yellow red 12 called locust. So if I if I threw that on the bottom, then it would give the underside kind of a uh, interesting look, you know. And if this flared out a little bit, maybe the under light would kick up under that surface. Um, so uh, that's just another possibility for you to think about. Uh, we're going in with our our warm one on the top here. Uh, and I'm, again, it's a small surface. I was starting with that, but even at that, even the chisel points, you can get some nice uh, size variation if you just turn the point a different way. So that's the number one. As you can see, I've reinforced it by going over it more than than a single stroke. So, uh, so while while it's drying, I'm just going to have some fun with my number four on this previous drawing and just sort of reinforce that line a little bit, just to kick out my thinking. Now here there is no separation like there is here, and uh, and you know that's an oversight on my part. But but again, it, it gives you something different to look at and um, and think about. You know, do you want a separation? Could you generate a warp field within this kind of a a cone uh, shape? I don't know. Um, we would have to ask uh, Matt Jeffries what he thought about that. Uh, just add some uh, some thin lines in there just to sort of reinforce the fact that that's a cone shape now instead of a, the tube that I have uh, in these other ideas. I don't know. It could be kind of cool. This that that kind of unifies the shape a little bit. This gives it more complexity. I haven't done any panel lines in here, but uh, you know, let's say we use the same thinking and you know, come in with these different shapes just to add some panel lines and and uh, so on. And these uh, bussard collectors. I'm going to go ahead back into this drawing and add those in. 
because I think that's a pretty good idea. Um, you know, I don't know. Copic also has a, a colorless blender, which is very cool. Uh, you can take your shapes and just sort of blend them down into what you're doing. And when that dries, it'll, uh, you know, it'll have a much softer look to it. So, um, I'm going back in with my, with my warm, uh, with a warm three on this cockpit cover, this, just to see what that looks like. Darken that down, just to give it some shape. And I'm just going to add a pass on that other side of the ring just to make it visible. What should our bussard collectors look like? Star Trek there, <clears throat> they started out as an eggshell orange and they they morphed into a, a cherry red which I really don't like but just just for hoots let's put in a pale green and see what that looks like just to give it something set that area apart from the rest of the ship at least in this pass so there we have the beginning of this little independent project spaceship. I'm going to continue working on it and uh, and when I get closer to the bottom I'll pick this back.